Hey there, Steve here. Hope you're doing well. I'll be real with you for a moment. Learning math rock guitar is not going to be easy, but I'm here to hopefully make that job a bit easier for you. I designed this video for guitarists who are new to math rock and looking for a good place to start. If you are a complete beginner watching this, then I must say massive respect for clicking on this video. Stick around and see how you get on. In this video, I'll teach you two feature packed exercises that are going to get you started on your math rock guitar learning journey. But before we get to those lovely exercises, I think it's important that we need to know what what are the fundamental concepts that we need to understand in order to play math rock style guitar? So to begin with, I would expect you to be proficient in some of the basic guitar techniques, such as being able to hold chords, move between chords, be able to hold a pick and do alternate picking. I would have expected you by now to be able to play your basic open chords as well as bar chords. In math rock, we'll be looking at more advanced techniques such as finger picking and finger tapping. And we'll look at those two in the exercises coming soon. Moving I would expect you to have a basic understanding of some music theory concepts related to guitar. So this would be familiarity with like your basic scales, such as the major and minor scale, uh, maybe the major and minor pentatonic scales. I'd expect you to have knowledge of chord construction as well. So looking at a key and what chords can be built from each note of a key, you know, being major, minor or diminished. And I'd also expect you at this point to have a basic understanding of how time signatures work and different strumming patterns and different rhythms you can employ on the guitar. A big part of learning math rock is to be familiar with alternative tunings. Two of the biggest tunings are FACGCE and DAEA C sharp E tuning. I don't expect you to know these non-standard tunings at the moment, but just be aware that they are used a lot in math rock and adjacent styles such as Midwest Steamo. For the sake of simplicity we're going to stick to standard tuning for this video. Moving on we have our time signatures. This is a very synonymous concept with math rock guitar. I wouldn't expect you to, do, to be familiar with this concept at the moment but I would expect you to know your standard uh, common time such as 4-4, four, 2-4 four, four, and some more compound time signatures you know such as 3-4 and 6-8. And in the exercises coming soon I'm excited to introduce some odd time signatures to you. Of course this list isn't exhaustive but in my experience it covers a a lot of the things that you should already know and it covers a lot of the concepts that's going to get us started on that math rock journey. So let's move on to practice what I consider the two most important concepts from that list which is going to be the essential techniques and some odd time signatures. To do this we'll take a look at two exercises to get you started. Both exercises are a little challenging but they're highly rewarding and both of them will make use of odd time signatures. Let's begin with the finger picking technique. It's used a ton by a lot of math rock guitarists and they create some of the most head twisting riffs that I've ever heard. <laughs> and many people, including myself, have come to love some of these really head twisting melodic riffs that they write. So for our finger picking exercise, we're going to be in 9-8 time. I know, technically not an odd time signature, but it's definitely something that's used quite a lot in math rock and it does feel quite odd because it's kind of like a, a bar of 4-4 but with an extra beat added onto the end. If you look at 4-4 as 8 eight beats, let's say eight eight, when we have nine eight, you're adding that extra beat on and it just has that really kind of disjointed feel to it. It's quite a tricky finger picking pattern, but it's gonna help a ton when it comes time to learn and write some of those finger twisting licks. So the exercise is based around two chords, an E major seven chord and a D sharp minor seven chord. So it's going to make use of all of your lovely fingers and your thumb and we're going to ascend in patterns of three and in nine eight we can group it in three groups of three. That's why I chose nine eight to be honest. You're going to go this kind of pattern, thumb, index, middle and then you're going to come back a string and you're going to go start from your index, your middle and then up to your ring like that kind of like just walking up the stairs but taking a step back every time and then and then after that you're going to go middle ring um, middle ring little three groups of three that way and for the descending pattern we're just going to do the opposite of that. We're going to start with the pinky little finger and work our way down. So little, ring, middle. And then back to your ring, middle, index. And then middle, index, thumb. 
and there's no break in between because it's 9 8. Right, so grab your guitar, let's practice this together at a manageable speed. So we'll start with just playing the ascending pattern in that 9 8 time signature. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's it, you got it. Keep going up. Walk up and down those stairs. Okay, let's try the descending pattern now. So I've got the metronome going, get your D sharp minor seven chord ready, and I'll count us in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. place there. <laughs> so moving on from finger picking, let's tackle finger tapping. So this has become so synonymous with the style of math rock guitar. When someone even mentions just math rock, a lot of people will say, ah yes, finger tapping and our time signatures. Hence why we're having a look at both of those today. Again, it's employed in many different ways in math rock. It can be very complicated, eight, uh, eight finger tapping, or it could be more your chord based kind of chords with tapping, you know, more of like a, a melodic style like that. We're going to be in seven, eight, and I see this as two groups of two and one group of three. And this is kind of the opposite of nine, eight, whereas nine, eight feels like a bar of four, four with an extra on the end. Seven, eight feels like a bar of four, four, but with one chopped off. If you, again, if you were to put four, four into eight beats, eight, eight, seven, eight's gonna boop, take one of those beats off the end there. So it feels just as disjointed, but in a slightly shorter fashion than 9-8 time. It's gonna get both of your hands on the fretboard, but we're not going to be using all eight fingers here. We're just going to be using the index, middle, and ring for both of our hands. And the exercises are both a major, major arpeggio and a minor arpeggio shape that you can use. So it doubles up as an exercise, but there are also shapes that you could employ. So let me demonstrate both of those major and minor shapes for you. That's the major shape and the minor shape. So some pointers for this exercise, we want to make sure that we're effectively muting unwanted string ring. And to do this for the, you can just lie your index finger across the strings as a mute. And then your group of three, with your other hand, you can anchor your thumb on the side of the fretboard here for stability, on the side of your neck, sorry. And you're just going to tap up in order of your fingers there. Index, middle, ring. And again, you can be muting here. So it's nice and clean that way. And the same applies for the minor shape. Instead of playing the major third, I'm gonna have the minor instead. Little bit more trickier, and here's a bit more trickier too because of that minor third instead of the major third. Um, it's not in a line anymore, unfortunately. So you need to jump up with your uh, ring finger there. Again, grab your guitar, I'll set a metronome at a slower speed, and let's practice this together. Okay, so we're in 7 8 time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now count you in and we'll do the major shape first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's it. Nice and cleanly. A 
could do like the this part descends and that part ascends the two different shapes and of course as you come comfortable you will want to speed up these tempos Do one more. Fantastic. Let's practice the minor version. Okay, so up to the C sharp on the ninth fret here, and we'll do a C sharp minor arpeggio instead. I count you in again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's it. You got it. Find this one a bit more tricky, that's for sure. Especially at a slower speed. <laughs> Right, I've included bonus exercises for each of those techniques for the lovely patrons that support the channel. There's a link for that down below in the description. If you want to learn more about the basics of math rock guitar, then a shameless plug, check out my math rock essentials ebook, which is a guitarist guide to math rock. There's a link again down below in the description for that one. So now you've mastered some of the basics of math rock guitar techniques and some odd time signatures. The next thing I suggest looking at is some of the essential chords and you can find those in this video here. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it if you made this far. Keep on going and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.